It is a good day here. It is December here. It is Monday morning. It is the year 2018 coming to a close. You know, you can hear Mother Nature and Father Time and um, and the Lord. You know, you can hear Buddha and all of them, the whole crew. They're, they're boxing up the year. They've been using the year, playing it all, you know, like a board game. And now they're putting it back in the box. Things have happened and people have come and go and babies have, you know, crawled out of crotches and, and senior citizens have, 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 have crawled back into the earth. In that bad motorcycle of living and life and dying and condensation and acid rain and telecommunications and all of it, the whole whirlpool of existence has almost come to the end of its coil for this year, 2018. And as the year goes into the box, all it's left to do is wrap it up and put a bow on it. And that's what we're trying to do, I think, is just, you know, if it's been good, if it's been bad, if it's been ugly, if you've lost someone, if you've loved someone, It just, uh, we got to, you got to finish strong here and just put a bow on it. Look forward to this, uh, to this new beginning. It's coming. I'm happy to be here with you guys. Uh, welcome to this past weekend. Hey. started to get a little bit lost on what uh where we were in the song that's jingle bells jingle bells and some people say jangle jangle bells some people say probably even jungle bells probably you know those people let's be honest they're they're probably not doing super great people that say jungle bells but that's jingle bells that was sent in by a man named tiny sand who and some people don't know who he is, and some people know who he is. And Tiny Sand, who he's, we've never seen him. You know, and this was a, this was a I guess he's a man. He said he, 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 he was in emails. He started just emailing in riffs that he made with his own fingers. You know, in his own ten fingers. I'm assuming he have, he, that he have ten fingers. And he made those riffs for us. And that one right there is Jingle Bells. And he sent that into us last year around this time of year. And so uh, I just wanted to play it again so that we could have that. And just to remind us how or remind me that so many people have contributed to this bad motor scooter right here of this past weekend. And thank you guys for being with me. Um, today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. You know, there comes a time when every man's life when he doesn't know what to do and he doesn't know uh, what direction to take. And if, he, if you find yourself caught in the bosom of uncertainty, you can always go to Gray Block Pizza, 1811 Pico Boulevard, on the way to the beach. Gray Block, get that hitter. Today's episode is brought to you by Minimal Case, M-N-M-L Case. It is the world's thinnest iPhone case. Now, I'm talking so thin. A baby could, you know, a baby who had a heavy arm could just break, probably break, you know, not break through it, but 
you know, could, well, actually probably couldn't do anything to it because it is actually a case, but, but, um, it is the world's thinnest phone case and you can have it. It is just zero, uh, 0 0.01 inches thick. It is basically just a, a fine plastic sheath for your phone. And it covers the new iPhone XS's, the XR's and Pixel 3's. Those are all in stock. Showcase the beauty of your phone. Bulky cases are out of style, says Minimal Case. And there's a 100% money back guarantee. If you are unhappy for whatever reason, they will refund the purchase of the case. No need to even send the case back. You can get 20% off by visiting mnmlcase.com and use promo code Theo for 20% off at mnmlcase.com. That's minimal case. And those things are thin. It's basically like, it's like putting a condom, like a hard condom on your phone. And you know that. Oh, wow, what a week. Santa's coming, Santa. Dude, in these days, I think Santa could probably catch some charges. You know, it's a different time now. A big white dude rolls down a chimney somewhere, bruh. You know, it's, it's not going to work super well right now. You know, probably a lot, I'm surprised a lot of, you know, extreme liberal people, they're probably going to put little caps on their chimneys. Saying that, you know, they don't, they don't want to be a part of it. I heard somebody the other day, a parent out here in Los Angeles saying that they didn't want their children celebrating Christmas. That it feels, it, it feels errant that gifts just come out of nowhere. And it creates a, a, an environment where they feel like uh, um, their children didn't do anything but are, but are getting gifts. It creates a bad example for their kids. Man, fuck that. This is Christmas, man. It's the one time a year when, you know, an old guy can wander around and do something nice for a kid. Every other old guy, if it ain't your grandfather, it's a pedophile. You know, with some guy who's, you know, eating cookies all day and then trying to touch a little bit of young skin. And that's the thing I think on a lot of these, you know, on senior citizens, because a senior citizen is just a regular person that, you know, is just really, you know, that that death is kind of starting to fucking flirt with. That's all they are. A senior citizen is just a kid that's like 70 or 80 years old. You know what I'm saying? It's just something really, you know, a senior, senior citizens really, they're basically just, they're people that are starting to bother everybody. You know, they're wild. And so some of them, they just, they lash out. If you've been ever been to a senior care facility, when I was in um when I was in high school, I went and lived with a family. And uh and and the mother was a speech pathologist. And she used to put these suckers, these, these little lollipops in like a senior citizen's mouth. And it the lollipops had a little electric motor hooked onto it on the stick of the lollipop that you would put the stick into this little motorized button thing. And you press the button and the lolly would, would that lolly would spin in the senior's mouth and it would get him to start, you know, getting moist or, you know, uh, get them glistening and stuff on that fucking tongue. And it, then they would be able to talk easier. And, you know, cause some of them had had, had strokes and, you know, two strokes and fucking, you know, greens and regulation and fucking, you know, birdies and double birdies. They had all kind of mental health issues and everything, and they couldn't barely sometimes move their mouth or talk. And she put this little lolly on their tongue and get that bitch spinning, you know? And then it would get them soft, you know? It would get them softened up in the jowls and they could participate and start to learn to communicate rehabilitation. That's what they call, they call that rehabilitation. And, and so sometimes we get high after school and go in there and, um, and she'd let us go warm up one of the seniors because she would do the lolly in their mouth for a while and then have them do the alphabet or, you know, uh, you know, they would say like, uh, Wilma washes, um, 
you know, the window sills or things like that, little tongue tanglers, you know. Uh, Larry loves, you know, liquid lozenges and say it as much as you can and things like that. Every brown car does fine, things like that. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, sh you know, uh, Shane, Shane, what is it? Shane sells salmon um, at, Ma not Macy's, I don't know what it was. Shane, uh, she, sells, she sells salmon at the seashore. Things like that, different, you know, you know, little verbal, you know, jump abouts that get your face happening. And so anyway, sometimes we get in there, bro, and we get stoned. We come from school and fucking joint out and get all fucking pop, pop. You know, we'd have the, you know, we'd have the devil fucking dancing behind, you know, you know, dancing behind our eyeballs. And we get in there and get a couple of those little motorized lollies and fucking just plop them on the tongue of any senior because they like that activity. Dude, you put a motorized lolly on the tongue of a senior citizen, bro. Their whole body will start to sweat, some of them. It is it is a real... Because for some of them, that's the most... Um, it's the most sexual action they've had in decades, maybe. And, see, and sometimes, you know, one time we got in there and my friend Bo, he'd never been in there. He'd never been into the senior center. And dude, I was in there, I was fucking running around, hiding... You know, I'd hijack a couple dollars and shit like that. A lot of them had stamp collections and shit, and I'd get in there and, you know, look at the stamps and be all high and just, you know, um, put on their different... Sometimes they had, you know, big sh jackets and big sweaters, and I'd put on some of their clothes and just, you know, fucking around at the senior, you know, at the senior center. And he, my buddy Bo, one time he got in there, I didn't tell him that... Uh, that I, I, I told him that you got to go hug them all when you see them, right? When when you see the sen seniors, one of the rules is you got to go hug them. And so next thing you know, he's hug. He's just going senior to senior, you know, giving them that fucking double arm, you you know, just that double arm fucking rum shockle, just hitting them straight up, just chest to chest. And uh, and some of the older ones would fucking, you know, grab his fat or do. You know, touches even he was a little he had a little bit extra weight on him at the time and he had fucking, you know, um, kind of kid tits on him, you know, middle aged kid. He was like a middle aged child. You know, we we're 15, I guess. And he kind of had a little bit of tits on him. And some of these seniors, you bruh, they fucking grab a boy's tit, man, because a tit's a tit. You know, people don't think about that. People think, oh, man, I saw these tits on this girl or whatever, but a tit is a tit. A titty don't know if it's on a man or woman. A titty is just doing its thing. But, yeah, sometimes seniors, they'll touch a fucking skin or they'll do, they're naughty. I mean, seniors are, are they're just children hiding in very old skin and eyes and hair. That's all they are. They're basically just a kid like in a sleeping bag, but the sleeping bag is made out of old skin. And um, and different stuff like that, and um, you know, and sometimes they put baby powder on. And that was one of them. They had this one dude, um, Mister. I guess I want to say his name was Mister. Damien, this big black guy, bro. And dude, he put so much baby powder on. Fucking damn, he thought he was fucking four months old, bro. And sometimes you're talking to him, and he smelled so much like baby powder, you would forget he was a senior citizen. Especially when you're high, dude. I'm sitting there high. And Mr. Damien, dude, he was, you know, and he was urban. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was, I don't know if he was 100% African American, but he was at least maybe 80 or 88%. And he, um, but he wore so much baby powder. I mean, he looked like damn Pablo, you know, Juan Pablo Montana. I mean, he had just, it looked like he was just selling coke off his shoulders. He had so much baby powder on him. And you'd talk to him when you were stoned, and you, dude, sometimes I thought he was just a fucking, you know, like a 160 pound, you know, uh, black infant that was just really chatty, dude. I'd get way high. We used to get way high on that fucking ditch smoke, bro. When people used to grow weed in ditches right out in front of their homes. So, but anyway, uh, but yeah, you got to be careful, man. Senior citizens, they're very unique and rare creatures, and people forget about that. What happened this past weekend, man? Oh, dude. I'll tell you this. Um, 
the uh, oh, I went to dinner with David Spades. I went to dinner with David Spades uh, yesterday night, and we've been communicating some, and it's kind of crazy because people always talk about Joe Dirt and this and that, and then uh, I feel it's almost like enough people talked about it, and next thing you know, we're going to dinners. And dude, when you're going to, I didn't know what to wear. I mean, I dude, I was trying on all of the shit I have, which ain't much. I got a new Curious George sweater, and um, I had a fucking trench coat, but part of it was in a little bit of a fire and has like a, I guess it looks more like a wild western apocalypse kind of, you know, like something maybe Ralph Lauren, not Ralph, maybe like a Ralph, yeah, maybe like Ralph Lauren in Australia would sell it. It, it's like a trench coat, but it kind of has an apocalyptic type of, you know, vibe to it. But anyway, so I went to dinner with David Spades, and and it was fun, dude. Bro, he was talking the stories about Chris Farley, and uh, and it was just kind of fascinating. And I thought I was going to be real, real nervous, you know? I thought I was going to be real nervous, because it's David Spades, dude, from... um. Who was he in? 51st Dates. You know, he's Joe Dirt. He's, I mean, I, you know, he's like an American Idol. He's like, damn, you know, he's like kind of like a, he's like Willie Nelson, but maybe like more of like, but that could work at a library. You know what I'm saying? He had the wild vibe. But it was fun, man. It was just fun to talk about different stuff. And I was telling stories about growing up and, uh, yeah, it was like a fancy restaurant, and there was like people drinking, you know, fucking. All the, you know, they you could hire like a poor person to come over and just cry into your mouth, and it was like, you know, just it was that exp. It was fancy. You could get anything you wanted. You could get, you know, probably piss from damn Neptune if you wanted a couple quarts of that. Whatever you wanted, they had it. You could have somebody come over and drink their blood right out of, out of their neck. You know, a healthy person, maybe from Denver or from one of those CrossFit groups. It's that kind of place. I mean, it's Los Angeles. You can get whatever you want. Unless you're a kid here, you can barely get Christmas anymore. They said it's scary, the lady said the other day, it's scary to have a, to, for, her, for your children to imagine a man they don't know coming down the tree. Bitch, that ain't a man. That's Santa. Have we lost it? That is Santa. It's Santa. It's not fucking, you know, Jerry Lawler. It's not, um, I don't know anybody else, but, it. you know, these are seasoned professionals for holidays. You know, next year it's going to be like, oh, the Easter Bunny. I don't, you know, this doesn't sound safe to have... A rabbit coming and bringing, um, you know, unboiled eggs and hiding them? This sounds like a salmonella issue. Suck a dick. This shit, man. Merry Christmas to everybody out there who's celebrating it. That's what I'm telling you. Um, but it was wild, man. I got to be, you know, it was just kind of a crazy thing, dude. And I didn't feel super nervous. I remember when I first met David Spades, it was a couple years ago. And I was like, okay... I was standing talking to him. I was like, all right, am I, do I look crazy right now? Do I seem, does my, do my arms, do I have both my arms on my body? Um, you know, is, you know, what's going on? You know, how do I stand? Do I stand with one shoulder pointing at him? Do I stand, just stand as tall as I can? What do I do? When do I talk? But it was just comfortable to just be relaxed. And we had some tuna. They had cuts of tuna. God dang. This tuna fucking so good. It could have been damn. I don't know what it could. I mean, it could. It looked like it just. I mean, like just like they just. Just the Lord himself. They cut the back strap right out of dang Jesus Christ. And just sous vide it or whatever. Sauteed it. This meat dude. Bro, you, it was so fucking, you brought it up to your mouth, this tuna meat, you brought it up to your mouth and it just disappeared, bro. That's how good it was. It dis and the minerals and the, the vitamins were just in your body suddenly. It was that kind of thing. 
And David Spade, he's notorious around Los Angeles for, you know, meeting a lot of ladies. And he's kind of like a seahorse of a man. He's like a little, you know, he's kind of that cute little delicate little magical creature, but also got that horse, you know. Somebody I read somewhere, in, I think in a chat room or like in the dark internet, that somebody said the little guy's got like a damn, you know, probably six and a quarter inches of cock on him. And that's about a fifth of his height, probably. I don't know how tall he is, but, and I don't know that good of math, but, but dude, it was just crazy to be over there with David Spades and just sitting there having dinner and talking and just, it was just fun. And I did a couple comedy shows. Um, so thank anybody that came out. We threw a gal out at the comedy store. And I guess I felt kind of bad about it, but she had just had her feet on the stage and she was make she was just being really uh selfish. So that happened. What else happened? Lost my fantasy league. Dude, and I sent that gay text that you send sometimes, you're like, oh, well, I just want to say, guys, it was a good year. I had fun. I fucking hate having. I wish I wouldn't have sent it. Had a great time. Thanks. Fuck that. I wanted to win. You work so. You know, a lot of ladies out there, I don't think they realize how hard men work at fantasy football. It's the last thing we have is fantasy football. And the, the rules keep changing. I mean, in, in, a, in another year or two, the men aren't even going to be allowed on the field. That's how crazy the rules are getting. You know, it's just basically going to be, it's going to be like people, just two different teams from different cities playing Pokemon cards. Um, what else? Oh, I realized this. So, oh, I'll say this, man. I don't want to tell you guys because I'm afraid that I'll start back, but I'm, this is my sixth day of no smoking. And I feel, I feel hopeful. That's what I feel like. You know, I just needed a change for myself. I needed something to adjust. I, I, I hate smoking. I like it, but I, I don't like the way it makes me feel. And in the end, I'm starting to think, I just don't like feeling, no matter what I do, I'm hard on myself about it. You know, no matter what I do, if I do anything, no matter what it is, it's like, man, you shouldn't be doing that. Man, you did that, man. It's like my brain always says something. It won't let me enjoy anything, really. Everything I do, there's something that's not right about it. So that's kind of what I've started to just realize recently. And that's, you know, I don't like that. But, you know, I can figure that out. I'll start to figure it out and. But I don't like that. It makes it like my brain doesn't want me to enjoy my experience in the world sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll go work out in my brain and I'll have, a, you know, food after my brain. Like, oh, you should have had different food than that. You had that bullshit. Or, you know, I'll try, a, you know, I'll have a little cuts of, um, you know, London brawl at the house. You know, because I used to have a ton of London brawl. And then I, I started thinking... My brain's like, damn, dude, you're going to turn into like a damn British person. You know, you have, because one, one week I had about, honestly, probably five pounds of London brawl. I know it is a lot, I guess, but so my brain just, you know, wants me to not have fun sometimes. So I have to just be aware and know that, guess what, sometimes I do want to have fun. No matter what I'm doing, sometimes I just want to be like, well, I did it. That's just something I did. I'm not a bad person. I'm okay. <sighs> Speaking of be, people being okay, Pete Davidson makes troubling Instagram posts. Man, he's, been, he's had a wild time, huh? You know, Pete's, a, when you, the times I've been around Pete, I'll say this, he's, al he's always been extremely nice, very kind. He has a very loving you know, he's almost like, you think of a teddy bear as like kind of a sluffy, you know, a fluffy little, you know, thing maybe who got, you know, fluff in him and, you know, little cottons and, pat, you know, little packets of softener. But, and he's like that, but he's like a tall, skinny one. 
but yeah, I just, uh, it just seemed like a lot of pressure for somebody that's having some mental, who's, 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 who's mentioned having mental health issues, bipolar issues. And <sighs> that's scary. I bet, you know, I've never had, I haven't had anything like that, but I can imagine it's scary. And then he's in a big relationship and the media doesn't care. Those people don't care. The news, they don't respect. They don't give a fuck. Hollywood doesn't give a shit. They put him on SNL an hour after he made a post that said he didn't know if he wanted to be alive. Is that, well, I guess, you know, it don't change his, I, I, maybe it's the best way to do it, just cruise along with what he wants to do. But Jesus, who's close to him? And he just seems like he's in a tough spot. And I, you know, I can understand it. I know what it's like to feel like you're in a tough spot and not feel sure about yourself. Um, and so I just hope he gets the help that he needs if he if he needs help. You know, I hope that he gets the help that he needs. Dude, Joe Rogan tweeted that he would interview Kanye. And man, I would love to see that. I would love to see that. I hope Joe Rogan ends up uh, running the whole world. He secretly does. It's just, you know, people are slowly getting on to it. I think. What do I know, though? Um, What else? Oh, dude, I've been realizing this. So even though I quit smoking, my, um, you know, my jerking off has been kind of flaring up at night, not at the daytime. I notice my, my, my heavy desires to really touch out and spray out of my own body occur around 1 a.m., 1240, 1240 to 120. I almost want to lock my dick away in a special box. Because I'll find and I will find ways to, you know, but yeah, I'll just keep finding ways to touch my own body until seed flies out of it, you know, and it's kind of, um, it's tough. It's tough when you just do it, you know, when you do it too much, but, but we'll see. We'll see, man. I'm not going to feel bad about it. I just wish that I had a bit more control over it. I mean, I almost want to handcuff myself to the fucking neighbor's door or something. But the crazy thing is I've been noticing when I do masturbation in my room, the neighbor's dog will start barking. And I don't know if anybody else is a pet owner. I've never been a pet owner. You know, I got attacked by a bunch of animals when I was young. Two birthdays I got attacked once cats and also by dogs on a different birthday. Kind of a group attack they did. Um... But yeah, that kind of stuff, if you think that it's not, you know, it's it's just kind of alarming to think that the dog knows I'm doing it. So if anybody has experience with that, where animals behave certain ways around them while they're experiencing, you know, full sexual or self-sexual, let us know. Let me know. Hit the hotline with that, 985-664-9503. Because I swear to God, the thing, and it used to be that I had a neighbor, my neighbors had a cat, and if I would pleasure myself when I would leave the apartment later, the cat would be out there in front of their apartment. And so something's going on. I'm like the damn, uh, you know, beat master. You know, like the beast master, he had all these little ferrets and little you know, Guatemalan fucking steampunks under his arms and shit. Well, I'm like the beat master, dude. I jerk off and all the animals show up. And it's like, damn, what's going on? Because this is, I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm living in like in a magical apartment complex. But if I'm doing masturbation, I'm doing self-skeet, you know. I'm doing that fucking, you know, making my little own, my, you know. My old doing my own old faithful over at the house, then there must be something going on. You know, I don't know if my if my what's expelling out of my body is coming out at a certain, you know, audible octave or something. If you know the animals can hear it, or if it's I don't know if I've been eating something that makes the scent of it real strong or real primal. You know, to th but to have that cat would, that would be on its doorstep across the way when I would come out after doing myself. And then now to hear this dog barking, whimpering. And look, I think the crazy thing is it took me a while to notice it. 
And finally, I noticed it, and I've no, every time I notice it now. And I'm just thinking, well, how long was I doing this without even noticing that every time I was masturbating, that there was a dog out there? You know, a dog was, I mean, I didn't even notice that I was jerking off and there was the sounds of a, you know, a big animal. And I didn't even care or stop. You know, I guess it just, I don't know, it doesn't make me feel bad about myself, but it makes me just like, what the fuck, man? It makes me think I don't have a lot of skills, you know? You know, if an animal's jerking off, if I'm jerking off and an animal is, you know, howling and stuff through just a regular apartment wall or, you know, it just makes me think I don't have a lot of skills if I'm not noticing that. So, I don't know. Maybe I need to meditate more or something. But yeah, and then it makes me think, well, what if, every, you know, how far is this happening? Like how many animals within like a, you know, Within a half block radius, are there fucking monkeys swinging around the chandeliers? Are birds chirping? You know, are there worms coming up out of the ground? Like, what the fuck's going on when I, you know, what's going on? So, different times, man. Different times. Saying they don't want Santa coming down the tree because it's, you know, embarrassing or down the chimney. Can't jerk off without a wolf coming near you. Different times, man. Is it the end of times? Man, if it were the tour, if we're getting close to the end of time, time ain't just gonna end. There's gonna be, you know, a couple months of just, you know, some exciting and adventurous decline. So one of my buddies was telling me the other day he works at a company. They make swords, like real nice swords, and you know, I mean, I guess nice swords. Who knows, dude? But he said they've been selling so many swords. He said like hundreds of times the amount that they usually do. So people are getting ready. People get ready. There's a train coming. Get your swords, bruh. Get a couple nades. You know what I'm saying? Text your cousin that went AWOL. Say, hey, papa, papa. I need a couple of fucking nades, bruh. Let's start that revolution, papa. Um... What else happened this past weekend, man? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's it, man. That's it. That was like the most exciting stuff. I'll tell you that I got some upcoming dates, and those are at, uh, I will be in Omaha, Nebraska coming up, and that's selling pretty good. It might sell out soon. What else do we have going on? I've got um, the Comedy Store in Los Angeles. That'll be December 31st and January 1st. Uh, Omaha Funny Bone, January 11th and 12th. Irvine, January 18th, 19th, and 20th. Back at the Addison Improv, January 25th and 26th. February 8th and 9th, Columbus, Ohio. February 22nd and 23rd, Houston Improv. March 8th, The Wilbur in Boston. March 9th, The Borgata Hotel and Casino. And March 22nd, The San Jose Improv. And... Um, and I'm going to be coming to Australia in May. So you guys have asked and been so patient, and I'm very excited to be going there. It's crazy. I'm going to be going to Australia. So just different times, man. A lot of stuff on the platter, and I'm excited about it. And I'm excited I'm going home this week. I'm going to go see my family, you know, see my little nieces and nephews, and it's going to be fun and just, you know, try and be a part of the joy. I'm going to try to, you know, whatever has gone in the box of this year, I'm going to try to finish strong and put a bow on it. Um, you know, my life has been blessed with so many just special, you know, special people. I've gotten to meet some special people. I mean, dude, I was eating cuts of fucking rare, you know, damn lamb medallions with damn David Spades, brother. With Joe fucking Dierte himself, dude. Life's a yard and my bad day gate. And I'm not saying that that makes somebody special, but I've gotten to meet a lot of wonderful people from the shows this year. You know, I get to go home. I get to see my family. You know, um, I love my family. You know, they love me. Um, you know, uh, and I can be part of other people's joy. 
You know, I can think about, well, who do I know that's having like a tough time? Who do I know that's going through something new? Who do I know that maybe I could give a call to that they would they would think, oh, man, it's nice that they thought of me. You know, who do I know like that? And that's where I want to start my days at. You know, I want to just, uh, I want to start my days right there. Who do I know that, that I could try and care about or have a better experience with? You know, who do I know that I could help today? Be it a call, an apology, being brave, being brave, man, making some changes, being brave. Man, telling somebody you love them is be, is brave. Telling somebody you really, you know, hey, I'd love to spend some time with you. It's, shit's brave sometimes, especially now. When we went out here swimming in the dark arts, man. You know what I'm saying? That Voldemort is lurking. But we have, uh, we have weapons. We have each other. I will tell you this. We'll get into some calls. We had a lot of, uh, we had some neat calls that came in. Um, let me take this one right here. Here we go. Yo, see you Matt from Wisconsin. <clears throat> hey, Matt from Wisconsin. And Wisconsin is very, um, well, the Packers just lost to the Bears. I will say that, dude. And I got drunk one night with, um, who was that guy? Randy Travis? No, Jim McMahon who used to be a quarterback for the Chicago Bears, and I got drunk with him, and he told me he used to show his asshole to uh, a friend of his. And then also, he was dating he was dating this little kind of, I think it was like a Jewish lady, like a little, and she used to always kind of, he said that she used to kind of snack on his butt a little, you know, and that's whatever, bro. You know, we've all been through some stuff. Um, but... But, and yeah, and she had some real tits on her too. I saw her. But he also told me, Jim McMahon's told me that there was a, oh, he said one time, I said, well, who was like kind of, you know, who was kind of a, you know, a, a real poise that you played with? And he said one time, Phil Sims, they were in the Pro Bowl together. And Sims came up to him. They both already played their quarter or whatever and came up to him and was like, hey, Jim, if after the game you want to throw the ball around or something on the field, you know, I'd love to do that. And Jim was like, fuck that shit, man. I'm going to get some dang posse, you know? Um, But anyway, that was kind of a story that he told me. But uh, sorry, you called from Wisconsin. Let me hear more onward. You know, I've been having some uh, pretty deep, Deep episodes recently, and I thought I could uh, like to get back and uh, you know pick up the spirits a little bit. So I thought I'd fill you in on a kind of funny story, funny for everybody else but me. So I ate some uh, you know Burger King. They got that deal: ten nuggets for a buck. Well, <laughs> now I've heard of a deal before. A deal is something where you're getting something good. This don't seem really like a deal. Ten uh, nuggets for a dollar. God damn, brother. This sound like a real, uh, this sound like a risk. Oh, uh, I found out, found out why. See, I pooped my pants, man. I pooped oh, yeah. my pants real bad. Well, don't, you know, don't feel ashamed of yourself, man. People will, think about this. People used to just poop themselves even before they had pants. You'd be talking to your friend and they might sneeze and then just shit themselves. So, onward. You know, had to throw my undies away. Been having a tough go at it recently. I just want to know if, uh, you know, you got any advice for me. If I can never trust Burger King again. I mean, they're a fine establishment. I don't want to throw any shade at You don't want to throw any shade, dude. Those guys just took a dollar from you, and then you shit yourself for them. Is that business? What kind of business you like to get involved in, huh? Here's an idea, dude. Why don't you give me 40 bucks and then go cut your fucking arm off? What a deal. Now, man, it sounds like you got taken advantage of by the king. And they put that guy in the king and he's, you know, 
the guy, he had really small legs and wearing a fucking cape and he's ginger, you know, and he honestly, between me, seems kind of homoerotic. And that tells you right there, you eat enough Burger King, bro, you're going to be jerking your buddy off in a special cape. It's that kind of place. I mean, at least McDonald's, you know, they got all kind of scary characters. They got the fucking burglar. They got the big black guy, uh, Grimace. They got, um, who else? The fu- uh, They got the fry guys, whatever those dudes are, little French guys or whatever, you know, um, what, you know, whatever I think they are. Uh, who else do they have over there? They got the handicapped girl, you know, in the bike or whatever on the, on the wheelchairs. But dude, Burger King, actually Burger King used to have a group of kids on the bag and they, one of them was in a wheelchair, one of them was on a skateboard, one of them, you know, had, you know, his eyes were in his neck, you know, back of his neck or something, all kind of wild shit. So if you trust these people... I say, look, buy Amazon stock. That's what I'm doing. I ain't fucking around over there with Burger King dollar a pop. So you could, you know, drive back to work, drive back to work and shit yourself, man. You're better than that, I think. But who, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. But I will say this: Happy holidays to you, man. And if you want, dude, hit up Me Undies, bro. Meundies.com slash weekend, dude. They got those deals, bro. Get you a pair, fifteen percent off that first pair. Um, I forgot to tell you guys, I went to Harlan Williams. Oh, hey, buddy. You remember him? Harlan Williams is a friend of mine, a comedian, and he was in the movie. I know, I feel like I'm name dropping this whole episode, but he invited me to his Christmas party. And, um, he was in the movie. What is it? Dance, not Dance of the Wolves. It was, um, oh, oh, honey, I should, no. Honey, I shrunk. No, there's something about Marys. There's something about Marys, and I'll say this about Marys, dude. I dated a couple in high school, and I'll say this: they give some real decent blowjobs. That's one thing about Marys. I don't know about what the other stuff is, but so I went there, and it's fun, man. Harlan's knows how to throw a good party because everybody brings a, a ninety-nine cent gift, and man, he lives in a fancy place it's like at the top of the hollywood hills you drive up there and he said damn near who lived by him um joe does he live by him raven that's so raven you know the bird woman who was in you know bill cosby's you know part uh, when he was a doctor and uh and we had a good time but I accidentally started a fire. I was in the kitchen and they had a man who was drinking because he he got to spend time away from his wife and kids for a night and so he was getting alcohol. And he was drinking a bunch of wine and his teeth was turning gray. And this man, apparently he worked as Kermit the Frog's voice. He did Kermit the Frog's voice on different films or something. We kept talking to me, talking, talking. And I was trying to kind of lean... I was happy to listen, but I was always, I was also trying to just, you know, be a part of the scene. And he was talking, I think he might've just been kind of nervous. And I was kind of, I was a little bit lonesome. I didn't know anybody really there. So, you know, it was enjoyable, but he kept talking. So I was leaning on the fire, on the ho on the little thing that starts the stove, the igniter. And dude, Harlan had about 30 pizzas on the stove in the boxes, dominoes. Next thing you know, bro, whew, I guess I hit the light thing and it lit up. And some guy pushed me kind of out of the way and he really became a real um, savior. He became a savior. And I wasn't being a savior. I was just being somebody that started a fucking fire, I guess. But, you know, I don't know. They say when, you know, shit hits the fan, you learn who you are. You know, you're either somebody that's throwing more shit at the fan or you're a diaper. You're somebody that helps the situation. And I think... I think I was just kind of neither one. I just didn't. I mean, I cared, but also it was just like, fuck, man. Let's add some fire to this bitch, son, you know? Because when you don't drink and do drugs, sometimes you start looking for the devil and you want to see. Sometimes you want to see the dark arts, boy. Sometimes I start Voldemorting, baby. Um, but thanks for calling, man. Take care of yourself. If you bought nuggets at that price, bro, I think you, shitting yourself is the least of your worries. Um. 
we had some calls that came in last week that were regarding, you know, there was a teacher who was texting people for sex, who was texting children for sex, women teacher, a female. And, dude, I would give anything to go back in time. Dude, if Miss Gara Fowler from my junior high school or whatever would even, even today, if she just sent me a ceramic, you know, mold of one of her tits, boy, I'd fucking, my God, son. I'd hide my head in the sand and play with myself, you know? But but uh, but now pe- teachers are sending pictures and everything, and you guys had some calls and responses, your thoughts on that, because I wanted to get what you guys thought. As always, the hotline is 985-664-9503, and you can be a part of what's going on here. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Theo? Hey, this is Reverend Al Fresh from Denver, Colorado. Reverend Al Fresh. Thank you for calling from Denver. In Denver, if you if you you know a lot of uh, Dateline episodes, they hide bodies outside of Denver. Onward. Hey man, I just wanted to let you know I had an answer to your question about what's going on with the teachers and the kids. Okay, thank you for this. Onward. It's pretty simple, man. You know, right now men aren't allowed to be men. Evolutionary psychology has women looking for alpha males. Now, I'm not saying children are alpha males. But when they're in that environment, they're around children that are allowed to be who they are, you know. And these little, these young men are the alpha males of their environment. And that triggers something in, in the women, but, mm. you know, these teachers that aren't finding that grown men these days. Because grown men ain't allowed to be, be men. You know, they're not allowed to be the alpha males anymore. Wow, it's an interesting take. I appreciate you hitting the hotline with that thought. Uh, You know, there certainly is a very clear hierarchy in high school of who are the, you know, the jocks, the cheerleaders, the, you know, the scientists, the kids selling, you know, selling weed, the kid, um, you know, wearing, you know, wearing, uh, you know, the kid wearing like different costumes and shit to school and capes. They always have some fucking kid wearing a cape and shit. Um, yeah, there's certainly a hierarchy that's very evident and yeah, I guess I could see that, you know, whereas like you get a little bit outside of high school and suddenly you can't, if you're not playing football or a sport, you can't even, there's nothing really to prove that you're a man that much anymore. That is that mainstream media is glorifying for sure. You know, if you're a hunter, you're, they, they, you know, may, they say you're a piece of shit. If you're, you know, if you just want to have a wife that stays at home, they say you're like a slave owner. You know, if you just, um, you know, there's no, there's, yeah, there's very, uh, a man can't spank his kids anymore without going to jail. Uh, it's tough, I guess. That's interesting that maybe in, in the school system, these teachers, they see, oh, wow. You know, little Sherman over there got two trophies from the track meet. And all the bitches love him. I bet he would be something special for me. That's interesting. Interesting take. Thank you for hitting the hotline with that. Uh, let's take another call. Here we go. What's up, Theo? This is Taj. Uh, yo, I'm driving Uber in Boston right now. What's up, Taj from Uber? Taj out there on the mean streets. Onward. You were talking about why teachers are getting with students now more than ever. And you know what, man? We're all more sexual than ever. All of us are more sexual than ever, man. These hot mama teachers, they can have the hottest dude in school. Now these teachers, they go over the line, man. I had some teachers that were like 21. Like, these teachers are in school. Like, two or seven years ago, this chick was swinging on the monkey bars and, you know, making bad decisions. Yeah, I guess, I mean, you know, yeah, they're not that far removed from school. Maybe they're still living vicariously out some of their school time. They don't want to grow up. Um, yeah, people, with especially with the internet, and this is something even we noticed with the Chris Hansen episode, is that there's this line that's like, it still feels, it feels like a safe, it feels like a fictional area. Dude, when I'm playing on the internet, it doesn't feel like, it feels like once I close my computer, none of that is going to affect my real life. It feels like a video game. So I'm sure a lot of these teachers on these chat room and different things, maybe that's the feeling they get. Oh, this is just a video game. 
you know, I'm going to sit and send little Jeremy over there a picture of this slick wallet, you know. I'm going to show him the old brown-eyed girl in a fucking magic, you know, Snapchat window. Yeah. Uh, let's take another call that came in. Onward. Hey, Theo, this is Lance from West Texas. Love the podcast, man, but uh, just wanted to answer a question. You were wondering why all them teachers now are hitting on kids and young men, and I think it's because of skinny jeans, you know. You got a kid, a guy back there with that dick print hanging out, you know, on that side with them skinny jeans. And then teachers, you know, they get them pheromones going and shit, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, you see a little bit. Yeah, and teachers, women, they want, everybody wants to fuck something that's kind of, you know, youthful looking. That's nature. There's something inside of you. You want to fuck something, or at least for men. You know, you want your, you know, you want to, a, a young woman makes you think you can have a young, a, a child, a baby's going to be healthy. All of that is limbic. It's inside of our brains. That's in our history. So, yeah, man, I bet. Maybe that's just what's starting to happen to women. But that dick print, I guess you could have a special pair of pants on. You got the skinny jeans. Dude, and I had that AP, that adult penis, since I was... Phew, I don't even know. Second I saw my dick, it was the same. My dick been my si- same size my whole life, adult size, like a big snicker. And I can't imagine what my teachers thought. You know, even them t- changing my diapers at the baby center. That lady must have been like, Jesus Christ. They, they, usually, they used to have to put one diaper on me and then pull my dick over to the side out of the original diaper and put another little diaper on my dick. You know, and that's just... Is that dark magic or is that mother nature? We don't know. But it's, yeah, I'm sure if you're going in there and men are looking sexier with tight pants, it could influence a woman some. It's it's an interesting thought, man. I appreciate the call. Uh, Let's take one more in response to uh, what was happening. There was a Kentucky teacher who just got busted texting uh, one of her uh, students is sending uh, nudies and stuff like that and booty pics and, you know, uh, you know, spread legged photos of that and titties. Onward. Hey, so, Theo, Lucas from Austin, Texas. Hey. hey, Lucas, I appreciate you reaching out here from Austin. And, dude, I was just doing some, you know, I was doing yoga today and I do yoga off my off of YouTube. And the one I do is called Yoga with Adrian, and it's usually down in Austin, Texas. But uh, onward. Yeah, so right now you're talking about why these female teachers are fucking around with these, uh, with these children and whatnot. Yeah. And that's true. Maybe, I, and, and when you say that, Lucas, even about children, you know, it makes me wonder, maybe they want children, but they don't want to have them. They don't want to mess their bodies up. So they're like, oh, well, I'll just, you know, I'll have a child in, in my body, but just for a little bit, just with sex and not with, you know, gestation. Onward. Lines it up. Well, I think if you take a look, uh, I was born in 88, so I'm 30. Uh, this generation, I guess, you know, mine and younger and whatnot, pretty much I think they're acting like children. I mean, everybody's acting like children. Nobody wants to have kids, and uh, a lot of people uh, are building Sports, they're doing sports in the living room, you know, a lot of child things are sticking around and I don't know, I think it's all, it relates, you know, you're under 30 and you think you're kind of still a kid and you see a long life ahead of you, so you, it blends, it, it weirdly blends the, especially early 20s, early, early 20s, that's pretty much where, where, where it's at. They see no age difference between them and, and the, the 16 year old, 15 year old, because then the 15 year olds, they're grown up, they're, they're adults, they're, they know what's up already, so, the men mentality is going up and it's me in the middle. Wow. Hmm. You know, when I was when I was young, we I used to ride the school bus. One time I was at school and Dot Wall had to take me home on the bus. And somebody had told me, called me a dildo at school. Oh no, some kid had said, Well, do you know what a dildo is? And I didn't know. But I said, I do know what it is, dude. You know? And then I, I, I and I didn't know, and I felt ashamed, and the kids made fun of me, two other boys. And then when I got on the bus, I called the teeth. The lady said something, and I called her a fucking dildo. And I had to go to the principal. 
and my principal had a brown tooth, dude. So, you know, great guy. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck, man, you know, brush your teeth a little. You know, maybe somebody paddled this dude right in the tooth. But anyway, I, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, fuck, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I'll say this, man, is that I think there's something to that. Nobody, people don't want to grow up now. And there's this fictional, there's this world online, this fictional universe, even with video games and, um, you know, avatars and all that, where it's all, you can co-mingle. You can, dude, I've had people send me a, a message on Instagram that are underage. Women and gay young men say, what, you know, trying to holler at me. And I say, what the fuck? And I say, look, I can't, I can't even communicate with you even in any facet. There's no... There's no hello, there's no, uh, you know, you know, suggestions for young, there, there's none of that. You know, I'm not playing in that universe. But, yeah, man, I, I could see that. I could see how people get, you know, why not? It's just a, it's an online world where anything can happen. And then I think also if maybe if parents aren't able to parent their kids as much, Fathers aren't able to be fathers as much. Then these young women, they don't look as old at older men, maybe as fathers. So you have, or you know, like, or vice versa. It's like you see, you know, everybody. Yeah, it just kind of all blends together, and especially more that online universe. That's what I'm thinking. Is like if you're in this, you know, there's this game people are playing, Night Star or something. What is it? Um, where people do make up fake characters and they fight each other. It's called uh I don't final fan. Uh, no, I don't know what it is. It's huge though. All the kids play it. But if you're on there, you know, as long as your avatar looks decent. And I think women want to strike back. A lot of these bitches are like they want to go to prison. Snapped. A lot of a lot of you know wild women. They just want to be on an episode of Snapped. That's their dream. You know. I just want to you know, Eileen Warnos. Remember her? She was the one who was dating that little boy, Shally Cashvili or whatever, out of um, Hawaii. And, dude, that was the only one you ever heard of when I was growing up. These, you know, a senior citizen woman. And now here you have real, it's popular every day. Dude, it makes me want to find a damn time machine. Boy, I'd go back in school. I'd wear cologne every day. Bro, I'd be stuffing my pants, bro. With a couple of tube socks, dude. The long ones, not them little ankle ones. Fuck that. That's the weirdest guy who somebody who stuffs their sock, their pants with socks, and does it with an ankle sock. You little bitch, throw a couple tubes in there. You know, take your chances. But everybody's acting like children. Maybe now it's like, especially maybe if people don't have as much faith in religion and they're thinking there's no afterlife and stuff like that anymore, that maybe they're just like, oh well, let me just live here. Let me just dance with the devil all night long. They'd rather just live the consequences out here because they think it doesn't matter. Just a thought. Different times, man. Let's take another call here that came in. The hotline is 985-664-9503. And I want to say this for those of you listening to this through the laughable iPhone app, we've got something really special to offer you. It's a chance to buy our Get In There shirt on sale for the holidays in a totally new way. If you allow push notifications from Laughable, you're going to get a link to that shirt on your phone, on your home screen right now. Just tap on that alert and the listing will pop up. Pretty cool, right? You can go to the listing in other ways too. Laughable has put links to it on the media player screen for this episode, in the episode description, and front and center on its Discover recommendations. You can't miss it. You'll be amazed at how fast and simple it is to buy through Laughable. Way less of a headache than going through a website. I'm also going to have a couple of new shirts. Uh, the Road to the Strap goes through the Rat. That one will be coming out this week as well. Um, it, it won't get to you by Christmas, but it's a nice shirt. We've been uh, you know, putting it together for a while. And um, in the episode, you can go vote too on uh, for Fighter and the Kid. If you're a Fighter and the Kid listener and they're having guest of the year, on the opportunity for somebody to win that strap. But yes, laughable. 
We're excited to be experimenting with Laughable to find new ways to reach you guys with special offers and to connect what you're hearing me say with what you can do in the Laughable app. We think it's the future, so I hope you will help us invent that future by placing your order today. Yes, check out the Laughable app. It's a great way to listen uh, to any podcast I've ever been on uh, and also to this past weekend. But they have a new technology where if, if, if somebody talks about a product or something on, that they're selling, a podcaster, then a link can be right there in that moment. So you can go and check out that, uh, check it out that way in real time as you listen. Pretty cool. I'm also on uh, Michael Rosenbaum has a podcast and you can check it out. I just did an episode with him. Uh, what is it called? Rosenbaum. And he was Lex Luthers. Uh, Luther, sorry. Inside of You is the podcast. You can go check that out. Uh, let's listen to another couple calls that came in here. Um, here we go. What's good, Theo? This is Billy from Addison, Texas. I work at the Addison Improv, and I just helped you out with your merch table when you came through, and you tipped me out nicely, and I just want to say thanks for that, man. Oh, you're welcome, Billy. Yeah, I had a good time in Addison, man. Um, and I'll see you there again soon in a couple of weeks. I was a little overwhelmed, man. It was a, it was a long day, but I'm feeling a little more relaxed uh, now. Onward. Thank you. And uh, I also want to say I'm 241 days sober. Wow. Dude, that's awesome, man. I appreciate you sharing that, man. That made me, you just made me feel so good, man. You know, and I hate to say that I feel good because it's not about me, but you made me feel joy, man. You just, in one second, bro, you made me feel joy. That's crazy. Um, and not not joy for me, but I feel just joy for you, you know? Because that's a confident thing to say, man. Onward. And you've helped me stay sober just hearing about your story and your journey and all that, man. I appreciate it. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but my mom died when I was one, so hmm. I can relate to some of the things you mentioned about having intimacy issues and all that. I mean, although it's unfortunate, it's just dope to hear that someone else deals with similar issues, man. So keep doing what you're doing, and I'll see you in January, dude. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, man. Uh, well, I'm sorry to hear about your mother, dude. That makes me feel kind of sad, uh, you know. But I'll tell you this. I, I do remember meeting you, short-haired guy, white guy. And I bet she'd be really proud of you, dude. You know, I bet she'd be proud of your sobriety. I bet she'd be proud of, um, you know, you know, you're a handsome young guy, I thought. No homo, bruh. You know what I'm saying? I'm still chasing, you know, females and that. Struggling to do it, but that's what I'm doing. Um but I bet she'd be really, really proud of you, dude. You know, uh, she obviously created a very nice young man. And uh, and I'm sure you'll see her again one day, and she can let you know just how proud of you uh, she is. But thanks, man. Fuck. Uh, now I'm going to have to pay you better next time you help out with the merch, man. Damn, you really put me on the spot there, boy. You really put me on the spot. But I might bring one of them lollies, bro, one of them face lollies. If we got any seniors out there, we can heat them up in the crowd. Um, but Merry Christmas to you, man, and uh, and thank you for helping. And thank you for that call. It was just a nice thing for you to do. You didn't have to call and say that, and you did. Uh, onward. Let's take another call here. Here we go. What's up, Theo? My name is Ryan. Calling from Atlanta, Georgia. I uh, was just got done listening to your Attachment Theory podcast. Hey, Ryan from Atlanta. Thank you for calling in, brother. Um, onward. And how you were saying that you uh, wanted to add a little bit more diversity, uh, for example, uh, you know, black artists and things of that nature. And they never hit, hit that. You know, I'm a black. I'm black. You know, I really think it doesn't matter. You just keep doing your thing, man. You shouldn't have to satisfy everybody's opinions on whether or not your podcast is diverse or whatnot. Just do do you, you know? And, you know, if the opportunity does come where, you know, you get, you know, more black people or whatever race on your um, podcast, then that's cool, you know? And the comment that you said about uh, being afraid of black people, you know, I wouldn't blame you, especially at the fact that, you know, you uh, grew up in Louisiana, you know, there's a lot of black people there, and um, they would jump, jump you and beat you up. Shit, I would be afraid too, you know? So, just be honest. Always be honest, you know. You know, people just don't want to be honest, and everybody obviously in this culture is offended about everything. 
that's pretty much all I want to say. Just keep doing what you're doing. I enjoy your podcast. Um, it gets me through my work day. Hey, you are hilarious and clever. So, like I said, keep doing your thing, man. Love you. Well, thanks for the message, man. That's nice of you to say. Um, I appreciate it. You know, that's nice of you to say some of those things. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Um, yeah, I, sometimes I guess I do feel, yeah, I guess, I mean, I don't like forced diversity either, you know, but I do feel, I don't know, it's crazy. Like, I don't want to be somebody who doesn't offer opportunities to, you know, my black friends or black entertainers, you know, or, you know, I don't know. I appreciate you saying the be honest part, you know, I mean, there's times like where, you know, when, when people started really looking, especially at race, like in Hollywood and like in the past two years, there's been like a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff about race, a lot of conversation about it. And I talk about it a lot. Um, but it did make me start to think like what some of my circles are like. And, you know, if I do have prejudices or I do have feet, you know, like I have, you know, leftover fears from experiences um, when I was young with black kids or, um, you know, being afraid, I guess. I think I was probably afraid of everything. Um, you know, and I guess sometimes, I, you know, I wish that I could be. You know, it, well, it just made me think, like, if I want to have more of an experience with black people in my life, then I have to at least try and make more efforts in that space. It made me think, like, oh, wow, usually when I have a comedy show, like, I'll put some black friends on it here and there. It doesn't matter. I don't think, like, oh, I got to have a black guy on the show. But sometimes I'll ask some of my comedian friends who are great comedians who happen to be different, you know, race or ethnicity than me or, or gender even to be on my shows. Um, but it made me think, oh, sometime, you know, I could probably take uh, an opener with me on the road that is a black guy and because um, I could help a little bit in some way by putting more money and opportunity into the black community. And I, and I don't mean that in a way like I have any power, control, or anything like that. I just meant it in the simple way that like, oh, wow, the openers that I've always taken have always been, like a, for like a full weekend, have always been a white guy. I think one time I took a, um, uh, well, I guess, I don't know. But it just made me, it, I guess it made me think, well, I could be a little bit more conscious of thinking like, well, I do know that in the history of time in America that black people have had less financial support and have had a tough road. And what can I do sometime? Not in a way where it's like, oh, look at me, watch me help or watch me do this. But what is a way that I could, you know, just try and be um, more a part of the solution of like, well, let me give, let me th at least try and be more conscious of the fact that if I have some opportunities uh, to just be more conscious of the fact that I could give them to black friends and black comedians, I guess. Um, so I don't know. I guess some of the stuff I don't know what I'm talking about a little. Uh, but, but it's made me a little bit more conscious, man. Just the past couple of years has made me think, dude, there's times where it's like, am I, have, am I racist? You know, there's definitely, I, you know, I'd always say no. Like I always would be like, oh, I have, you know, I have black friends. I have black comedian friends. You know, I work with, I don't ever, you know, like be like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to be around these people because they're black or I don't have any, but it does make, it did make me think more about like, well, what fears do I have? What like stereotypes and prejudices? And in some places they're different, man. It's so, it's so crazy. Like in Los Angeles, I don't have as much fear and stuff when I see black kids out here, black people out here, black friends out here. In New Orleans, it's it, uh, it's just scarier sometimes. And I guess it's just because there are some areas, and just like there are white areas, dude, there's white areas where it's like, man, when I go out in some of those areas, like, you know, I feel scared. You know, when I get into some real severe areas of like, 
I don't want to say, I guess, yeah, like redneck type shit, you know? Like real, that shit makes me scared. Uh, and I guess actually some of that feeling is kind of, I guess, the same, really. It's just, it makes me feel like there's just more of a sense of carelessness around. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, I, I think one thing that I've noticed that has been good about the past few years of people talking more about race and thinking more about it is that it makes me honestly think about it. It keeps it on the forefront of my mind. Um, and it makes me sad to think that like, I, you know, I grew up with kids who, you know, I wish that they would have had more opportunity. You know, it makes me sad. You know, they had this one kid, Devin, he was a good friend of mine growing up and he, we used to have fun together and we ride our bikes and we would, you know, go eat, you know, we'd go get plums and stuff from the AMP and eat them and, you know, get like fishing meat and go do fishing. And, uh, and he, you know, he always made, I don't know, like, I think we were kind of the same a little bit in our own, um, I, I don't know. We just had some, I guess, I don't know what, I guess we're just friends. And, and he ended up, he got convicted of murder. He tried to murder somebody a couple years ago and went to jail for it. I think he did actually he was in a group of people that murdered somebody in, in like the green something hotel outside of Covington, Louisiana. And, uh, and it just makes me wonder, you know, it was sad. A lot of black kids did not have a lot of infrastructure around them when I was young, you know, uh, but now, you know, but I appreciate you saying that, that, you know, about forced diversity. Um, and then it's, it's interesting because a lot of black shows don't include it. You know, it seems like that, yeah, the forced diversity thing isn't helpful, even though I would love to see some straight up real Vatos and fucking Mexicanos in the NBA, dog. Come on. You telling me the Lakers got all these fans, bro, and they don't have one dude named Umberto? Fucking shooting six pointers from half court, wearing fucking dickies every game, bro. Come on, papa. Um, but now I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying about being honest, man. Sometimes I I just need to hear that and just feel okay with you know trying to figure out who I am as I talk. Uh, cause I don't, you know, I I want to be. I mean, one thing that has been nice in, when I, in my life when I think about white privilege is I've had the privilege of seeing um, mo a lot more black opportunity in my lifetime, you know? You know, when I see some kids start to make it and young dudes and they're black guys and, and not in a selfish way, but man, it makes me feel good, you know, because I didn't see that growing up. You know, they had, dude, they had kids, you know, I mean, you had the dude, they had one dude, fucking Janitor Johnson, I told about the dude last week, the dude, they named him fucking Janitor. Maybe his parents just knew, like, I'm making sure he gets employed here locally. But there wasn't as much opportunity, you know. And now there is more. And some of the stuff that we deal with in America, some of it's just going to take time. You know, you need a couple more generations. But I think that, you know, Donnell Rollins said it well that we're getting out of, the, I think, this excuse culture where people want to be just excuse babies, you know, and sit around. and Because if they want to do that, that's their life, man. Go have that life if that's what you want. You know, no matter what, who you are. Uh, but yeah, but anyway, man, I appreciate the, uh, the call. I'm sorry I had a, such a long diatribe on that. Um, but... You know, it's nice of you to call because sometimes I think, you know, I get, sometimes I think, well, what, and sometimes I do think it's like, you know, that a black, a white person could never really know what it's like to live in a black environment and grow up in, a, in black in America. You know, you could never really know. You could never really know. And it fucking looks fun, bruh. Dude, I've had two friends in New Orleans, black friends that were killed by other black men over the past 20 years. And, and I'm not saying that's fun. I'm not saying that's good, but dude, getting, being white gets a little boring. There's no, there's not, I mean, there's guns, but there's not, you know, there's not as many, you're not as fast. You don't get to do as many sports as fun. You can't fucking dunk as well. You can't be in the band as good. You know, you don't get to play that big drum. You got to play the fucking little clarinet. Like, dude, I think black people right now 
have so have such a great opportunity in America. It seems like, but fuck do I know, bro? But thanks for listening, man, and thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. The hotline, as always, is 985-664-9503. We have this right here that I want to tell you about. It's the Smart Setup Guide Business Building 101. And there's a man named Martin who does all of, uh, who handles all of my social media and has helped, um, really transform some of my, uh, and has helped some of my business ideas become realities. And if you own a business or are thinking about starting one or have a friend or family member that is, this course is 100% absolutely for you. It's easy to understand, easy to implement online video course. It breaks down need to know information that will save you massive amounts of time, money, and energy building your business. In just 2.5 hours, you will develop a pro-level understanding of how logo design and brand identity can make or break your business, the best way to build your website and online store, how to outrank your competition on Google, social media marketing, and how to secure new clients and maintain them long term. The course is created by Martin O'Neill, owner of Drastic Graphics, who has over a decade's worth of experience working with some of the biggest brands, Joe Rogan, uh, this past weekend, Fighter and the Kid. It's a perfect holiday gift for entrepreneur, business owner, or ambitious person that you know or yourself. For the month of December, get a 30% discount. Visit smartsetupguide.com and use code Theo at checkout. That is smartsetupguide.com and use code Theo at checkout. And that is a real deal, man. I think that thing is a real deal. It's like six videos. It's two and a half hours of information. Um, it's tutorials. Uh, Martin does a great job. Uh, let's take a, another call here. Here we go. Hey, Theo. What's up? This is uh, Thomas. I've been listening to your podcast for like probably around a year now. I just uh, was listening to you talking about uh, possibly not doing guest spots anymore, and I just wanted to say that like, I personally, the guest, your guest interviews are my favorite part. I just think you're putting a little too much pressure on yourself to be an interviewer when all anybody really wants, well, at least all I want to see and I think other people want to see is just your personality meeting someone else's, not necessarily an interview. Ah, wow, man! I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Yeah, sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing with it. You know, it's hard to be like it's exciting to talk to some of these people, but it's hard because I want to, you know, I want to engage. I want to be. I want to care about what I'm talking about. I want to be engaged with them. You know, I guess maybe I should think about it a little bit more. But thank you for saying that. Yeah, I mentioned last episode that I was thinking about not having guests or, or, or maybe just doing them occasionally. And I think I am going to uh, to, to at least get down to doing them occasionally um, or not every week, especially with King and the Sting starting up. But some of it also is just a stress, man. I've been feeling so stressed and uh, and I've been trying to relax more and take a little bit better care of myself. And I feel like I'm starting to. And so I'm hoping that I'm going to start feeling a little bit better, like a little damn, you know, just like a newborn little fucking baby lion. Uh, but thank you for that. Let's take another call. This is about guests as well. It says... Hey, Theo, it's Brandon from Ellensburg, Washington. I'm here with my one-year-old son. Oh, you got a damn one-year-old, huh? Hell yeah, boy. That thing still got a little bit of scent on him. You know what I'm saying, man? My buddy, dude, I'll say this. It's kind of vulgar, but... He had a newborn baby, and it still smelled enough like the old, you know what I'm saying, hoo-ha. He used to kind of, you know, he'd get a couple hits of the baby and then, you know, run out of the baby's room and rub one out in the restroom by himself. Nothing crazy, you know. But, so, you know, different people do different stuff. Let's hear more podcast every monday and wednesday morning but i wanted to tell you that i'm all in for you doing less guests i love the guests you have on you have good guests you interview them well but we enjoy the individual podcast a lot more uh you talk about some good shit on so you know what it is mine you know what it is boy gang gang man thank you for calling in and congratulations this might be your baby's first christmas i'm not sure second christmas coming up 
But uh, I hope that's warm to you guys and you get to spend time with your loved one there. Um, all right, let's take another. Uh, we got another call right here. This is uh, this says it's humorous. Onward. Hey, man, I was calling about one of the best or worst weekends. Uh, this is only Saturday at 1 a.m. right now, and it's definitely going to be one of the lowest points. I thought I would just call you because I had to have someone to call, man. Okay, thank you for calling. We'll get into your emergency right now. Now, the best or worst weekend, we're getting back into that. If you have a best or worst weekend that occurred for you, and don't give us no bullshit weekend. You know, like your nephew, you know, got a rash or something like that, or somebody won a couple of dollars at the track or whatever, or you guys fucking been, you know, watching videos of Bichons online or whatever. Make sure it's something legitimate. And you could always leave those on the hotline, 985-664-9503. Onward. Um, I was just at Waffle House. I go there all the time. Oh, damn, I love Waffle House, bro. They have raisin bread. How in the fuck more people don't have raisin bread, man? What a crazy person thought of that, dude. You know what I'm saying? Somebody must have been on some fucking dope or weed or just acid or something or some fruit acid. Because they're sitting around some bread and they're like, hey, guess what? I'm going to hide some fucking raisins in this bitch. I mean, wow. People are amazing. Let's hear more. The cooks know my order. Okay, so you're a, wa- you a regular. you a Waffle House regular, bro. More? And the cook in there, he's kind of a sketchy dude. We all smoke a little pot, but I think he's doing a little extra, a little extra of the, the dark dark magic and whatnot. Oh, he might be on that simple syrup, you know what I'm saying? Or that simpleton scissor. He might be on that straight fucking cocaine. Man, I worked at a place one time, the dude did so much cocaine, he, it, he did more than his paycheck. Like, what the fuck, dude? You got to do a little less than your paycheck. You got to save $40 to eat during the week. You know, get you a couple of, you know, gay, uh, gay station hot dogs. More? And, uh, man, a police officer came, came rolling into the parking lot, and I gave him a, a little courtesy whistle because he was out of his car, obviously, up to no good. And I didn't know that the police officer's window was down, and so he directly drove over there as a consequence to me whistling mm. and then relayed that information to the gentleman that he then arrested for two ounces of marijuana. I know I can never go back to that Waffle House again, man. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend going back. I'd find another Waffle House or I'd find a Huddle House or I'd just find a bad bitch that don't mind using a little bit of, uh, you know, that don't mind heating up that griddle around midnight. But yeah, man, I mean, you owe him an apology. I would see if you could, you know, contribute to the court costs or something. Give him a $150 gift certificate, maybe to Dick's Sporting Goods or something. It sounds like there might be a Dick's around you, you know, a Dick's Sporting Goods around you guys. Usually there's, if a Waffle House, they got a Dick's Sporting Goods within about 10 miles. Um, Fuck, man. Yeah, you fucked up. You snitching. At least you didn't eat fucking 10 nuggets for a dollar and shit yourself, bro. The guy also, if he's going to smoke dope, he should do it in a, you know, more of a regulated area. You know, I mean, he could probably fucking vape right over by the grill and just blow the shit into the fucking grilled cheeses. So I think it's 50-50. I think you have some responsibility because you tried to intervene. You tried to help. If you didn't do anything, maybe he would still be capable, you know, and still living or outside of jail. But he's two ounces of fucking weed. Damn. Dude, I w- rolled into a Waffle House one time and tried to get him to start a softball team at night. And one of the fucking assistant managers beat my ass. So, you know, sometimes those people are up for, you know, new ideas. And sometimes they aren't. All right. Let's take another call. Onward. But good luck, man. And thank you for calling to get it off your chest. As always, the hotline is a place you can get something off your chest. 985 664 Nine five zero three. Let's hear a call that came in. Worst weekend, actually. Onward. And I just don't know what to do. All right. So, so I'm 23. I'm- okay. Sorry. This isn't a worst weekend. This says uh, sexting. Okay. Onward. All right. So, so I'm 23. I'm fucking a 39 year old. Oh, you damn. You should go back to high school then, man. That's what it sounds like. More? She's got a husband, but he had a horrible accident. I know it sounds fucked up, but he, 
is recovering from being paralyzed, and they have not fucked in years, and now she's sexting me and wants to fuck me, but she lives in Fort La- Lauderdale, and I live in fucking Tampa, so it's a little bit of a problem. And I'm, am I in the wrong for fucking her? No, right, because, I mean, the dude has a limp dick. That's not my fault. I mean, I just met her on a plane, and she, now she wants to fuck me, and I didn't, I didn't even ask for her number. Well, you didn't ask for her number. That's true, but you have some part in it. You know, I engaged one time with this lady, this is about 13 years ago, and I think we ended up making love in a hotel room really quickly. Because I'm that type of dude, I make love really quickly, bro. Some people's around there milling around in a cooter and all of that. Dude, I'm out. I'm out, bro. I think my dick has sleep apnea or something, you know, or um, what is it called when you just fall asleep when you don't know what's going on? Um... I think it's just sheer ignorance or something. No, it's uh, Pierre Favre had it. Our old librarian had it. Sti- uh, not cystic. Um, you know, you're just talking to somebody and they fucking, suddenly they one of the seven dwarfs. They're the sleepy one. And they just nod out. You're like, damn. Fucking Gerald don't give a damn what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyway, dude, if. You do have some part, you're communicating with her. You can't blame it all on the woman. You sat next to her, right? You guys ain't, now you know she has a paralyzed husband. You know, he's lies. A lot of people call that lies. And when I was growing up, they had this uh, dude, he was always freshened up, man, this black guy. And he had heat both of his legs. He was paraplegic. And they braided his legs around each other. You know, his legs would probably weighed about four pounds each. Just a long string of bone and a little bit of skin and, you know, five toes on each. And they would braid them bitches, kind of cornrow his legs a little bit because he was, I think he was in like a fucking gang or something. But um, anyway, man, what I'm saying is this. You didn't paralyze the guy. The guy has a wife. She is, she's walking out on her man. She's trying to get some sexual outside of her man. And he's lized up. I would, what I would do is I would talk to the guy. I would say, look, guy, you know, I'd love to help out around the house. You know, don't tell him that you're going to try and have sex with his wife, but I would let him know there's a way to do it, I think, where you can be a part of the solution for them because he probably feels bad. He might like to know that his wife's being pleasured somehow. Because maybe he just loves her enough and he just wants her to feel good and have some sexual pleasure, even if it's not him. Dude, I'll tell you that I bet 30% of guys would love for some dude to fucking roll through their neighborhood, like the Schwans guy or Swansons or whatever, and drop off some fucking frozen cock meat every couple of months. You know? It's wild. It's like if you need a massage, you know, you have somebody come and make all your muscles feel good, except that last muscle, that crotch. It's totally fine to go pay somebody $150 to rub your wife's back or something and put some olive oil on her neck or some, you know, fucking peppermint drops in her asshole or whatever and call it a massage. But the second you get to the part where somebody's, you know, going in or doing crotch work or whatever, or, you know, giving you blow jobs then everything gets, you know, erroneous. So I would approach the dude like a man, bro. Okay? Yeah, it's not your fault he's in a, that, he's, that he's lized up unless you did something to him, unless you hit him with something. And I don't know. You sound like you might have been doing, you know. I don't know what you've been up to, dude, honestly. I'm being judgmental, but who knows? I'll let, let me listen to a little bit more of what you said. Onward. Thanks for being paralyzed. They have not fucked in years, and now she's sexting me and wants to fuck me, but she lives in Fort La- Lauderdale, and I live in fucking Tampa. Dude, Fort Lauderdale to Tampa, that's not that far. Dude, at least go do it and be a f- helpful person. You're fucking, that guy's in a wheelchair. You know how long it would take him to get to Fort Lauderdale to Tampa? Probably about 200 hours or 300 hours, dude. What's it, a couple hours for you? You got all your legs in a vehicle and shit, and you over here bitching. You're the one who's paralyzed. So I'm just saying, man, if you're going to be helpful, be helpful. You know, but I would try and find some way to, to discuss it with the man and see if you can offer that service in a loving way. Because he may want his wife to be taken care of as well. 
gang, gang, man. But good luck out there. And if you drive over there, wear your seatbelt. Dude, wouldn't it be crazy if you ended up getting fucking pee-lized out? And now this lady's just collecting, you know, paraplegics at the house and going, and it's just, you know, the next dick is on its way. And that dude gets hit by a dang, you know, dump truck or something. Or, you know, somebody's moving a big elevator and it falls off a, you know, a pallet onto the car or whatever. Okay. But be safe, man. All right? Love you. Okay, let's hear another call that came in onward. What's up, Theo? Seth, Virginia Beach. What's up, Seth from Virginia Beach? And my boy, uh, Tony Brothers, is over there in Virginia Beach. And he has uh, Men for Hope, I think, is his charity. They got a great organization. And he's one of my favorite NBA referees over there. Um, onward. Just had some thoughts about the guy calling in about being, you know, anonymous with your sobriety. Uh, you know... AA has, like, what, a 5% success rate? Right. They had a gentleman that called in last week. Uh, I've been talking about being sober and, and why I was sober. That's what I've been talking about, why I'd found my way into the meetings and stuff. And uh, and he called in and said that I should not talk about some of it in that – I shouldn't talk about it in that facet. I should talk about sobriety, but – um, but I shouldn't talk about the program of AA itself because we are not supposed to talk about that. Uh, onward. And in your situation, if you're helping people get sober, staying sober, sounds like you have more of a success rate than, you know, what we call is just a business at the end of the day. A-A-N-A-C-A, Junk Foods Anonymous, Sex Addicts Anonymous, it's all just for some sort of money, don't you think, in a way? Donation basket passes around, you know? No, that's true. The donation basket passes around. But I'll say this, man. I've been involved with a lot of different environments where there's a basket that goes around the room or the opportunity to donate. Um, I've never seen one. I've never seen them collect enough money in one of those rooms to do much. And there's never, uh, you know, I can't. I, it doesn't seem like a place that makes any money to me, that it all goes right back into the program. In fact, it's the only place I've ever witnessed miracles happen are in um, in some of the rooms where I go to be a part of a sober group. The only, I mean, I've seen miracles happen. And, uh, and that's one of the things that keeps me going back and being entertained. So yeah, I, I would never say that. I, from, from my experience, I've not seen any of that be about money. Um, in fact, I feel like I, I wish the government didn't have any hands on it, but I wish that they would give them a huge stipend every year just to help out. But AB, but the, some of those programs, they're self-supporting. They are self-supporting, you know, and that's what makes them continue to function. It's a re some of those programs are really, really exceptional, man, have blown my mind the way that they operate and the lives that they save. Um, but you know, it, it's, the rules say in the program you're not supposed to talk about it at the level of press, radio, and film. And I guess podcast is radio. I mean, I think of it as like a journal, really, kind of like a loud journal. But maybe some people it's different. But uh, but thank you for calling in. Um, onward. Let's take another call. Hey, Theo. This is uh, AK from Texas. Not going to use my real name because I'm about to get into some sensitive shit. But damn, AK from Texas, boy, onward. I uh, just want to let you know I appreciate the podcast and take a lot out of it when I do listen. So thank you for that. Anyway, I'm you're welcome, man. Um, thank you guys for being here, dude. You know the two year anniversary of the podcast is in uh, like a couple days, December nineteenth, three days. So next next week's episode, which I will tape from my brother's house in Louisiana. Um, It'll be two years onward. I'm calling in just because uh, I don't really have anyone else to tell. I almost slept with my coworker after the Christmas party on uh, last week. Damn, bro. That shit's fun. I think those kind of environments. That's one thing I do miss about drinking is, you know, in, in, more things could happen. You know, you can't be the so When you're sober, you can't, you know, you know, fall asleep on a Xerox and wake up with, you, you know, your dick in some lady's printer. You know, you can't do it like that. So you got to have more reasoning behind what you're doing. What happened? Onward. Kind of conflicted about that. Been seeing a girl for a few years. She's out of town and <sighs> decisions were made. Uh, ended up going back home with her, but didn't do anything. And I don't know, man. At a weird crossroads in my life. Don't know what the fuck I want. Uh, 
don't know if my girl's the one. Don't think that this this girl I work with is the one either, but she was there and she's looking pretty good, looking like a snack, you know? Oh, you snack a dactyl, boy. You that fucking puss a lot of puss. Onward. So hey, thanks for listening. Don't know what to what to expect, but uh yeah. There we go. Here we go, man. And sometimes you just got to take that edge off and share that. And it sounded like to me when I was listening to you, something did probably happen when y'all went back to her house, you know. Uh, but whether something did or didn't, the, the the reality beneath a lot of it is that, you know, you're probably feeling some remorse. You're uncertain about your own relationship. Here's the thing. I would tell your girlfriend this. if you need, If you're thinking about telling her, I mean, I, you know, I can heavily relate to this situation, man. Um, and it's hard. There's a lot of influences today that make you wonder, you in the, should you settle down? Are we settling down? What's going on? Can I do this? You know, it's hard. It's crazy. It's like, you know, I could love somebody to the end of the world and then, you know, still just have something inside of me sometimes that makes some poor choices or that messes up. And it's hard to live with both of those things, to be both of those things at the same time. And some of my friends are like that and they embrace it a lot better. Some of them are like, well, I'm just going to cheat on my spouse and just, you know, keep that burden to myself. And that's just how I'm going to be sometimes. It doesn't mean I'm not going to love my spouse. It doesn't mean I'm not going to raise my family and, and be a good dad. Other people say, well, I, I would never do that. I want my home to be sacred. And that's, and it, you know, it's different types of people that are able to handle different types of things. One of my friends says, dude, quit lying. I quit lying to myself and pretending like I was going to be able to be a man that could do a family or be able to be a successful, like, you know, have that type of environment. And I finally realized, no, I'm just going to be a type of man that's going to make some poor choices sometimes. And this is, I'm never going to be able to stop like being entertained by other women and stuff like that. So I've heard a lot of my friends share a lot of these things. Um, The thing that, you know, I don't know. I think they always say that the truth will set you free. And I wouldn't tell someone something if they don't need to hear it, though. Sometimes, you know, if so, if it's just going to hurt somebody's feelings, you don't have to tell them. You know, you can tell somebody that you're struggling with y'all's how you're feeling, though. Uh, you know, it's brave to do that thing, to do that. And I've struggled with that, man. You know, just knowing like, fuck, am I... What if I can't do this? What if I can't, you know, love somebody forever? Or if I, if I already know or think in my head that I'm going to make a mistake, uh, or I'm going to date somebody else, or sleep around on my wife or girlfriend, and, you know, and those burdens are hard to carry, man. I've carried them, and it's, you know, it's painful to carry that stuff around because you know that you're, I mean, you know, you're hurting somebody else's feelings, but they don't know about it. But you're also just hurting your, you know, you're kind of hurting yourself in those instances. Um, so, but I think, you know, we might get to a level of humanity where some of the stuff of the committed relationship kind of not, it devolves, but it just, it evolves into like, what's actually, if we're capable or not, because there's people that, you know, that we're living up to this ideal that, that are trying to live up to an ideal of a family, this idea of a family and a relationship in their head that they know that they can't, um, or just they're not ready and they're trying to. And that's what I found for myself sometimes. I just, you know, but but don't just don't be too hard on yourself, man. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person, you know? It just means that this is something that's gone on that's made you some aware of that you may need to communicate better about it. Or you may need to really have a come to Jesus to call, talk with yourself or with a therapist. But I wish you well, man. Um, and... You know, if you're not going to tell your spouse or something about it, you could, or your girlfriend, you could at least also just go and be very loving to them in some way. You know, just as though, just as when, you know, if you make a mistake in one direction, you can make an unmistake in another direction. And an unmistake is when you try hard to just do something nice for somebody and let somebody know that you love them or that you care, you know. Um, But it's hard, man. It's hard to be, you know, away from people that you love. You know, and it's hard to have them not in your life sometimes, but 
you know, because you don't even know what kind of life you're living or what kind of life you want to live. Or sometimes for me, I don't even know if I already am living the life I want to live. And I'm just constantly second guessing myself. Uh, thank you for your call, brother. Merry Christmas to you, man. And just give your girl a hug and, um, you know, and try to communicate when you can. Let's take one more call and then we'll shut it down. What's up, BF? What's up, player? Onward? Uh, just calling uh, because I've been going through something for probably about like three years now. You've been going through something? Like what, a maze? <laughs> That's a bad joke. More? I'd say a good three years. Where I know for a fact, 100% fact, I'm not gay. I'm not into men. Dude, you might not be gay, bruh. You know, but you never know. Well, if you say you're not, you're not, dude. You know what I'm saying? I thought I might be gay sometimes, but I don't want some other dude in my freaking house all the time. So, you know, let's hear more. I love women. I love vagina. It's, it's beautiful. I love it. And I, I don't know if it's beautiful, dude. It's definitely some, you know, a lot of it's seen better days. You know, and a lot of people are saying that butthole's the new vagina, too, and those people are out of their minds. But onward. Not homophobic at all, you know. If there's a little bit of that dick in the you know, so cut it, baby. You know, but uh, my problem is, uh, you know, I, I, I just like stuff in my butt. You know, I'm not gay, but you know, I like things in my butt, and I was just wondering if that's all right. <laughs> all right, see you, bye. Well, look, bro. I'm gonna say this, man. I don't know much. I'm not a doctor, right? I'm not a, you know, a proctologist, but. I know this, if I go to the proctologist every day and get that dude to put stuff in my butt, at some point, he's going to probably come to the conclusion that I like some type of homoeroticism. So, if you like stuff in your butt, dude, your butt is not a, um, I mean, your butt, when you think about it, your butt is, you know, guys like caves. Guys like mystery. Ooh, what's in there? What's over there? What is it? You know, you see guys, remember the Goonies, they went in that cave looking for something. And your butthole is just a special cave that's in the back of your body. And the worst thing I think about your butthole is you can't even see it. You can't even see it, bro. And I think if we could see it more often, we might not be as into it. But it has that mystery. You know, your butthole is the Sherlock Holmes of your body, really. It's that mystery boy. You know, it's that Encyclopedia Brown hole. So, if you like stuff in your butt, you might just be, a, you might want to be a drug mule. Have you ever thought about that? You might not be a gay guy. You might just be wanting to run dope across the border. You know, so I'd love to, you know, when I was young, me and this boy got stuck in this semi truck and this man was putting um, Tootsie Rolls in our mouth. And I liked it, I guess, but, you know, I, I didn't keep doing it after that. I'd have a Tootsie Roll every now and then, but I wouldn't jacking my jaws up with them like that man was in that semi-truck. And he got his ass beat for being a pedophile or alleged. But you got to think about yourself, man. If you out there hiding, and what kind of stuff, you didn't say what kind of stuff you like in your buttocks. If we talking ice cubes or something like that or a couple little marbles or something, that's, you might just be your own little Boo Radley where you hiding things in your fucking, in your, in your, uh, in your bark. You know, you hiding things in your own tree. Because remember, Boo Radley hit a bunch of stuff in a tree trunk. You might be a little bit of a Poo Radley, you know what I'm saying? You might be that Poo Radley daddy to kill a, uh, to kill a docking bird, bro. You docking birds in your bottom, you know? But you might be over there. Who knows? You hiding stuff in, the, in your own body walls. I don't know, dude. It sounds like you might be gay to me, but I don't know. Who's gay anymore? Somebody, you know, a buddy of mine, he, he said he hadn't eaten in a while. And then, next thing you know, some guy's blowing him at a party. 
And that shit doesn't make any sense. Dude, I remember one night at a party, this hot chick told this guy, she's like, well, I'll kiss you, but you got to kiss my friend first. And her friend was gay. He was into homoeroticism. So next thing you know, the guy's like, all right, I'll kiss your, your friend who's a boy. So, she, you know, the guy kisses the other guy and then the girl's like, fuck you. I'm not ki-. You know, she just was joking with him. She got him to kiss the guy. Dude, when I was in college, our one guy would pass out and this other dude was always blowing passed out dudes and saying it was like a game or something. And guess what? It wasn't even a game. He was just blowing dudes who was passed out. It was illegal. It was an illegality. So there's all kind of stuff, man, you know, but only, you know, for yourself, only, you know, for yourself. But what I know is that it's been that time of year and that we're still here together. And whether you hide and stuff in your butt, you know, whether you are, you know, you want us to have guests on the podcast or not, whether you um, are, you know, sending dick pics to your teachers or your students, whether you pooped your pants, you know, whether you almost banged your coworker and didn't tell your girl about it, whatever. We're all just people, you know, and we have feelings and we're just trying to navigate our life okay. And in the end, I think we all just want to be accepted, man, you know? And really, we really just also want to just be accepted by ourselves. Um, But I'm grateful to be here with you guys. I'm grateful we have this weird place to hang out every week for a little while. You know, I never thought I would be involved in something like this. You know, I never thought I would. I don't know what I thought. But I know that I couldn't have, uh, I couldn't have this experience today by myself and so i'm grateful for the calls that came in i'm grateful for our sponsors uh support those if you can um i'm grateful for tiny sand who who sent in that christmas jingle you know and what else man what else the year's over you can wrap it up put a bow on it go out different Change it, man. Put a, put a bow on the year. Don't just box it up and get ready for it. Do something special. You know, hug somebody. Put something in somebody's butt or your own butt. You know, do something nice. Do something different. You know, and we'll be here. I'll see you guys next week, man. It's going to be, it'll be almost Christmas when we talk again. I think it'll be the 23rd, so that's pretty cool. Pretty nice, man. I'm grateful for you guys. Uh, I'm going to go out on this uh, Christmas time, this is called. And uh, and that's it, man. That's all uh, she wrote. I love you guys, man. Be good to yourself. Um, you probably deserve it. And I hope to see you all soon. Uh, and, you know, at a Waffle House or, you know, in a relationship or you know, in a diversity discussion. Um, I hope to have a new year ahead of me where I can, you know, uh, just try and just be okay with myself and be okay with others um, in even bigger and better ways. I uh, love you. Have a good day, man. I got to get my antidepressants. They closed. The CVS closed. I'm going to have to get them fucking moved to a different CVS. Ugh. Just when you think you made it through life for the day. Hmm?